may be seated. And as you do, on behalf of the Armstrong and the Bishop families, we would like to welcome you to this celebration as Brad and Allie become husband and wife. Much time and planning has gone into making this day special, and the presence of the family and friends together today, together today is exactly what accomplishes that. So we must ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Well, Brad and Allie, you made it. Enjoy this. That was the most remarkable entrance, right? <laughs> right, Brad? Okay, good. Sent, sent you up for success already, so that's good. Brett and Ellie, I want to tell you, um, just between the three of us, as if nobody else was in the crowd, that it has been a privilege for Kara and I to be a part of this process. And um, as you think about it, Allie, um, your faithfulness over the years has been amazing to watch. And I wanted to tell you that whether it was singing with Sarah and a special music or serving together in the Dominican Republic, or even when it was pulling a prank on myself by hiding in the luggage compartment of the bus. Um, you have to know that we still love you in spite of that, and we're so thankful for this day, and that God has provided you this man. And Brad, today has been a, a neat day celebrating with you, and then even the interesting thought of being present at your parents' wedding 33 years ago, and now having a chance to marry their son um, is a unique and a special blessing as well. And so it's been fun to get to know you, and uh, sharing that common bond of being only children as well. And so we've had much to learn about, and um, better than all of those things, it has been fun to watch and to understand your love, not only for each other, but for the Lord. And our prayer is, as we go into this time of celebration with you, that we would be committing this relationship to the glory of God, and that's our prayer. And so, Brad and Allie, before we go any farther, I want you to know this, though, that Kara and I love you and that we are here for you. And I want you to think about this as well as you look at the crowd of people that are here and those that are gathered on your either side. This is your community. This is what we've talked about. Don't ever feel like you can't contact us or um, the pastors at your home church because that's what community is about. And so we want to see you succeed. We want to see you glorify God in your relationship. And I want you to know that just because you kissed the bride in just a few minutes, that the relationship between Kara and I and you two do not have to end, that we are here for you um, in the long run, and we love you guys dearly, and we're so thankful to be a part of your day. I did want to share with you just a couple thoughts from God's Word, okay? And the Bible teaches us this in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a helpmeet. And you understand this well, that when Adam was created, he was the only piece of creation that lacked a companion. When God observed that, he declared that that was not good, and he met that need by providing the wife, and so by God's design, a man and a woman are called in the scriptures in Genesis to leave and to cleave. The Bible says this, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And so understand that in the Garden of Eden, our Heavenly Father sanctified, and he hallowed the first home. In his wisdom, the first establishment was not the church, it was not the government, it was not a school system, it was the family. And I want to remind you that as God began to lay that framework for society, he started with the home. And so there are two principles that are found in Genesis chapter 2 I want to remind you of. And if you can hang on to those, then you're off to a good start. Taken right out of the text that I just read to you, the Bible says, first of all, leaving. The Bible says, therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave. And so I want to remind you when it comes to leaving, when a couple sets out to establish a new home, in a sense, they are saying goodbye to an old one. Things aren't going to always be the same, and we've talked about that quite a bit. You're not leaving, though, in terms of love and communication with your parents or your family, but you are leaving in an aspect of authority and priority now focused on the two of you as you serve the Lord together. Remember, outside of your relationship with God, your primary relationship is to each other. Stay faithful and continue to serve the Lord together as you strive to, to glorify Him. Brad, as you received your bride from her father, I want to remind you that you now become the head of your home that the responsibility and the leadership rests on your shoulders. It's your job to faithfully love and to lead Allie according to the word of God. Allie, your relationship now becomes directed towards Brad, finding ways to support him, to pray for and with him, growing together as you serve the Lord together as well. Not just leaving, but the Bible also says, and shall cleave unto his wife. And the word cleave reminds us of an important thought regarding marriage, and that is 
the permanence of it. That this is God's desire and has always been that a divorce would never be even spoken in the, in the home. And that you understand that the commitment that you're making, that you do so with utmost honor and respect as something that God has instituted to be permanent. It's ultimately a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. And I'm thankful this morning or this afternoon that both of you know Christ as your Savior and you desire to represent him in your home. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful as well that God doesn't divorce us Christians, that he doesn't turn his back or he doesn't forsake us. And so we, we exemplify that in the marital relationship uh, by not willing to walk out on our spouse as well. And so I want to encourage you that this is a permanent decision. And so Jesus establishes for us um, a pattern to follow in marriage. And so we are committing never to cut ties with our spouse, but instead to fight and to struggle and to celebrate the relationship that God has created here. So how? Here it is. Ready? Keep your marriage entertaining. If I could just tell you just a couple things. Make sure regardless of how busy you get, make time for fun. Now, in our weeks leading up to this day, we talked about it. It doesn't require a lot of money to be spent. I know one of you would be thrilled with that thought more than the other. Um, But it's just a game night, just a time to be together. Uh, The dollar amount assigned to that evening does not ascribe its value. Um, So you can find cheap ways, things to do. But set a priority to spend time together. Keep your relationship strong and keep dating even after I do's this afternoon. Keep it engaging because I would tell you that you will never find yourself fight, you will need to find yourself fighting for your marriage at all costs. There is nothing more under attack today, I believe, than that of the marriage. And uh, rest assured that as you continue to stay faithful to the biblical mandates that I've shared with you, that Satan is not going to stop his assault on your relationship. He would love nothing more than to drive a wedge between the two of you. And I want to encourage you to continue fighting for that relationship. Fight your schedules, fight for quality time together, and fight for your faithfulness to the Lord. And then the last one, keep your marriage exciting. Keep romance strong and enjoy your togetherness. Make sure that that remains a priority. Never feel guilty for wanting time alone. Never feel guilty for blocking off uh, even a holiday weekend to spend time just with the two of you. Make that a priority. But I would tell you that nothing is easier than saying words and nothing is harder than living them day by day. And so what you promised today must be renewed and lived out tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. And as you daily work together and as you daily love together, it will make your burdens lighter because you divide them. It will make your joys more intense because you share them. And it will make you stronger because it will let you tackle life's problems together. And so what I would like to do at this point is let's bow in a word of prayer, and then we will continue with our service. Father, we thank you for bringing Allie and Brad together. And God, I know that this time is going to be but a blur to to some degree that all of the planning and preparation that has gone into this moment... Um, has been for your glory, and we thank you for that. God, I'm thankful that Brad and Allie both know Christ as their Savior and that their desire in this marriage is to glorify you, and that's priority one. And so, Lord, I pray that you would instill into them these principles that we've drawn out of the book of Genesis. God, that as they leave what they have called normal for many years and now begin on this new journey in a relationship with each other, God, that they would um, understand that the people around them are still part of their community. We are here to support and to love on them, And God, we just thank you for the group that has gathered together to celebrate and show support. And God, as they cleave and as they establish that permanence in this relationship, Lord, I do pray uh, that you would stay the, the attacks of the devil. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them to fight for their marriage and for time together. And God, that you again might be Uh, strengthening by your grace this relationship that we are seeing uh, brought together today. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this time, and we commit this couple to you as we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Brad and Allie have established a goal, as we've already mentioned, of making Christ first place in their relationship. And for this to take place, married couples need a lot of grace, a lot of forgiveness, and even more prayer. And so as they join right now with their families for a special time of prayer, for those of us that have gathered together as witnesses, I would ask that you and your seats would join in praying with them as we continue to support them and lift them up before their Lord in this new journey together.
Gentiles, Brad, I will begin with you. Do you, Brad, in the presence of God and these witnesses, promise to love and to cherish in sickness and in health, in prosperity and adversity, this woman whose hands you now hold? Do you promise to be to her in all things a true and faithful husband, to cleave unto her and to her only as long as life shall last? I do. And do you, Allie, in the presence of God and these witnesses, promise to love and to cherish in sickness and in health, in prosperity and adversity, this man whose hands you now hold? Do you promise to be to him in all things a true and faithful wife, and to cleave unto him and to, and to him only as long as life shall last? Well, Brad, do you possess a token of love that you would like to present to your wife? I do. As you place this ring on Allie's ring finger, I'm going to ask that you repeat after me. I, Brad, I, Brad take the Allie to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish till, death do us part. till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance, According to God's holy ordinance I, pledge thee my love. I pledge thee my love. And do you, Allie, have a token that you would like to present to Brad? Yes. Now, Allie, as you place that on Brad's ring finger, would you repeat after me? I, Allie, I, Allie take, thee, Brad, take thee, Brad, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for, better, for, worse. for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poor. in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health. To, love and to, cherish. to love and to cherish, till death do us part. Till death do us part. According, to God's holy ordinance, According to God's holy ordinance, I pledge thee my love. I pledge thee my love. Well, Brad and Allie, you've been challenged by God's word. You've been challenged concerning the permanence of the commitment that you're making before God and all of these witnesses. You're representing it by the rings that you've placed on each other's fingers. And your verbal commitment through your vows has established the fact that you are desirous to glorify God and remain together till death do you part, just as you said. So I've got to tell you, as a minister of the gospel and by the state of Ohio, it is my privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. And let me remind you one final time, that which God hath joined together... Let no man put us on. Brad? Have a dramatic pause. You may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Brad Bishop.
family and the bridal party has some pictures taken. We want to invite you right back out the way you came in. There's some refreshments in the guest book in the foyer. We'd love for you to stick around for a few moments before we head to Norland Manor for the reception that begins at 6.30. Thank you again for being here. You're dismissed. Thank you.